Richard, of course, you are very famous for uh, developing the concept of meme, which in, um, in common uh, uh, understanding, in simplistically, is the application of evolutionary theory to ideas. Uh, and that is a meme for letters like a gene. There's a nice parallelism. Um, as you reflect back on the uh, emergence of a whole new subfield of cultural development, uh, how do you feel as the well, grandfather of it? D Darwinism is, is all to do with the differential survival of replicating entities and those replicating entities exerting some kind of power on the world, um, which affects their replication. Mm -hmm. And that's what genes do. Um, genes manipulate bodies and even extended phenotypes as well. And to the extent that they succeed in doing that, they get passed on to the future, to the indefinite future, actually. That's the important. Um, and I have said that uh, I believe that if there's life on other planets, it will be Darwinian life. If once again, it will be replicators of some sort making copies of themselves uh, and manipulating, might be bodies, it might be something more mysterious than that, manipulating the world in some way to increase their chances of surviving. Mm. And it seemed to me that a good example is actually staring us in the face uh, in, on this planet, which is um, units of cultural replication. Anything that gets copied from one brain to another or from one <laughs> computer to another um, is potentially fair game for a form of natural selection. Um, it doesn't have to be DNA and having spent the whole of the rest of the selfish gene advocating the gene, DNA, as the unit of selection, I wanted to make the point that it doesn't have to be DNA, it can be anything else that is self-replicating and that exerts power over its own replication. Mm. So if it's true that, well, it certainly is true that en entities get copied from one brain to another, that's obviously true. Um, and if some of them are better at getting copied than others, which again, I suppose is true, I mean, a tune that people like, it gets whistled in the street mm. more and gets copied therefore more. A clothes fashion that people admire gets copied, etc then that is a form of Darwinism. It may not be a very powerful form. It may not give rise to Permanence, yeah. co com complicated adaptations like genetic selection does, but it's early days yet. Uh, and so that, that, that's the idea of the, of the meme. It's, it's, the, it's the cultural parallel of the gene. Anything that is copied in the cultural milieu and that exerts an influence on its own chances of being copied, therefore is fair game for a form of Darwinian selection. Has it been uh, overused uh, or uh, uh, oversimplified in terms of how it might be applied or applied to areas that, that uh, sound superficially correct and are, are in fact not the mechanisms by the way it works? Well, I think, yes, it's, it's, it's got to be Darwinianly interesting in order to to be worth talking about. Mm. And so something like, I think fashion is a good example. Um, crazies at school, school playground crazies where a particular toy or a particular mm. game or something be, spreads like an epidemic yeah. uh, and then dies away like yeah. an epidemic. Yeah. Um, so that's another good example. When people talk about ideas going viral on the internet, mm. That's a That's good term. perfect yeah. example of a, of, of a meme. And I, I originally, actually, in the Selfish Gene, did talk about virus of the mind mm -hmm. as an example. Um, so things going viral, when, when advertisers strive mightily to get their product <laughs> or their jingle, whatever it is, going, going sure. viral, that's what they're, they're, they're trying to inject a meme into, sure. the, into the memosphere. Sure. Uh, e each of the examples you gave, the toy in the playground, fashion, music at times, uh, has its life cycle very quickly. Uh, and so, in a sense, it doesn't enter the, uh, uh, the germline no, right, of culture. Point. Yes. Yeah, but, but some have. Yes. But some have, and I, or, or I want to express the, the, the one that uh, immediately comes to both of our minds is religion. So if, if religion started out like toys in the playground, 
but <laughs> entered the germline of, of human culture. Um, I don't know if that's fair to say, but... Uh, well, I think it is interesting because if you look at highly developed, highly evolved, I almost say, religions, um, like, say, Roman Catholicism or Islam, where they've built up um, a meme complex, just like a gene, a gene complex of mutually supportive memes. Mm. One of the things that uh, I've been very keen to push in, in gene selection is that gene complexes arise that are mutually compatible, mm. that get on well with each other. And the same is true of memes, that, that um, something like Roman Catholicism is a, a complex of lots of different memes which are mutually reinforcing and get on well together. And so, yes, I think that I think religion is a good example. And uh, the, the reason you have memes within this big meme that are working well is that that as it began, there were probably different memes that occurred that some worked and some didn't. And the ones that were stronger and worked became became permanent. Yes, that's what I would ho hope was true. That I mean, th th that would make an interesting theory if you could show that. Yeah, uh, it's certainly it's certainly a very good framework by which to uh, uh, to, to to view it. So um, it's certainly a, a major contribution to thinking. It's a it's a framework. It 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 won't explain everything in the universe, but it it, <laughs> it, it, it will explain some. Yeah. <laughs>